Hello, this is Maraj Patel, and today we're going to be starting Unit 9, which is all about stoichiometry. And so today we're going to be specifically talking about how to interpret these e chemical equations to find the number of moles, molecules, atoms, and mass. And then we're going to also be talking about uh, conversions between reactants and products. And so stoichiometry, first of all, is the calculations of quantities and chemical reactions. And so, uh, with stoichiometry, you can find how many reactants are needed or how much reactants is needed for X amount of products or how much products will be formed with if we have this many reactants. And so, stoichiometry is pretty important for chemists to figure out how much reactants they need for this much of products. And so, this uh, calculation helps chemists figure out exactly how much stuff they need instead of just guessing everything. And so, the cool part is that balanced chemical equations show the amount of atoms, molecules, moles, and mass of the reaction. So that's pretty cool how this simple equation can tell us so much. And the most important, in stoichiometry at least, is the ratio of moles of reactants to moles of products or otherwise known as the mole to mole ratio. So moles to mole ratios are, we'll talk more about this, uh, but are the ratios of moles of one thing to another and so this is important for con converting between moles of this or moles to that or moles of this to this or either way anything. And so that's pretty important for converting from different substances to other substances. And so here, we have a diagram of a reaction. So we have N2, which is a gas here, by the low G. And then we have 3H2, which is also a gas. And it forms another gas, 2NH3. So we have two of these, and it's also a gas. And so here, we're going to find out the number of atoms, molecules, moles, and mass of this equation on both sides. So here we have two atoms of nitrogen because we have N2, so two nitrogens, and there's only one molecule. And then we have three H2, so three times two is six, so we have six atoms of hydrogen. Then on this side, we have NH3, so we have one nitrogen in each molecule, and then three hydrogens on this little subscript. And then we multiply that by two, so we have two times four, which is eight. So we have two atoms of nitrogen and six atoms of hydrogen. So in total, we have 8 atoms on this side and 8 atoms on this side. So that's nice. And so, here we have molecules. And so molecules are calculated from the coefficients. So if you did not have this picture, you can figure out everything. We just, we're going to talk about rest right now. So we have one molecule because we have a coefficient of 1. We have three molecules of this because we have a 3 out here. And so then we also have a two molecules of NH3. And you can always uh, notice how it's always the same as the coefficient. And it, this will always be true. So just count on this. So don't worry about this. So just look at coefficients for molecules. And the same is true for the moles. So you just look at the coefficients for moles. And notice how it's exactly the same as the number of molecules. And then mass again is calculated by by the periodic table so pretty much we count the number of each atom we have each type of atom and so we have two nitrogen here six hydrogen here then we multiply two times nitrogen's atomic mass and we get 28 because two times 14.01 or approximately 14 is about 28 then six times uh, hydrogen's atomic mass which is 1.01 .01, is about six so if we add 6 plus 28, we get about 34. And because we have the same number of atoms and same type of atoms on this side, this is all also the same. And it's always important to know that the mass and num atoms and number of atoms and type is always the same. This is always conserved, which means that mass and atoms is always the same on the reactants and products on both sides. 
because we have to follow the law of conservation of mass. And so, and so here we have an equation. So we're going to do the same thing we just did for another equation right here. Hydro hydrogen sulfide, which smells like rotten eggs, is found in volcanic gases. Balance, the balance equation for the burning hydrogen sulfide is 2 H2S plus 3O2 yields 2 SO2 plus 2 H2O. Woo! And so here we have this equation. And so we're going to figure out the same thing we did. Number of atoms, molecules, moles, and, so, and mass. So here we have atoms. So first let's count. So we have uh, two hydrogens and one sulfur in each molecule. But we have two molecules. So two times three because we have three atoms total is six. So we have six here. Let's put that on the side. Then we have O2. So two molecules of oxygen. But we have three molecules of this. So this is also six. So six plus six is twelve. And then let's go to the other side. So one sulfur, two oxygen in this little molecule, but we have two of these, so it's six again. And then we have H2O, we have two hydrogen, one oxygen, three, t with two molecules, so we have three plus, I mean six plus six, which is 12. And so FYI, just from that rule we learned that atoms and mass is always conserved. It, once we figured out this, we could always just know that there will always be the same number. So we could have just skipped all this work here just by knowing that there's 12 on this side. Then we have molecules and mass. And so uh, so mass we can calculate is calculated by finding the each type of atom and multiplying by the atomic mass. So let's just count the number of atoms in each type. So we have 4 hydrogen because 2 times this little subscript so four hydrogens, two times the S, so two sulfur, and then six oxygen because three times two is six. And this is also the same on this side, so just don't bother. So if we have four hydrogens, we have to multiply four times 1.01, and then add it with sulfur's atomic mass times sulfur, the number of sulfur atoms. So we have two sulfur, so two times uh, 32.06. So, and then we add that with uh, 6 times oxygen, because we have 6 oxygen. So 6 times 16, and if we add that up, we would get 164.16. And then the same is on this side, because we have the same number of atoms. So always remember, atoms and mass is always conserved. So if we find one side, we can just assume it's correct, uh, right for the other side, if it's balanced. So just remember, if it's balanced, it'll be true. Then we have molecules, so this is easy, we just get it by the coefficients, so we have 2 of this, 3 of this, so we have 2 and 3, so that's 5. Then we have 2 molecules of this, and then 2 of this, so that's 4. Then uh, moles is also the same, calculated the same, so again it's the same number, 5 and 4. And so that is how you do it for every type of problem so that's the same exact step and so here we have a quick quiz to see what you learned and so the first question a manufacturer of tricycles has 15 wheels 6 frames 5 handlebars 12 seats and 8 pedals how many tricycles can be manufactured using these parts and so we can can we make 5 3 6 or 4 and so the formula for a tricycle here, let's just imagine it's a chemical. So we need three wheels, one frame, one handlebar, two pedals, and one seat for each tricycle. So I would just go through all the different products we have or reactants we need. And so see how many parts we can make with this many of each of each ingredient. So we have 15 wheels, so we need 3 wheels for one bicycle or tricycle. So if we divide 15 by 3, we would get, we can only make 5 tricycles with that many, uh, part, uh, that many wheels. So immediately we can only make 5 maximum with that many wheels. So we can eliminate 6 because we can't make any more than 5. Then we have 6 frames, so with 6 frames we can make 
six bikes, but we only have 15 wheels, so we can only make five. So we can only, again, frames aren't limiting anything. So we have five handlebars. With five handlebars here, we have one handlebar for every bike. We can only make um, five bikes. So this is exactly perfect, again, with 15 wheels, because 15 wheels, we can only make five bikes. And then we have 12 seats. We can make 12 bikes with 12 seats, but 15 wheels and 5 handlebars are limiting us. So that's, uh, we can't make it again more than 5. But we have 8 pedals, and so this limits us because we need 2 pedals for each tricycle. But, uh, so if we have 8, we can only make 4 bikes. And so, because pedals is the least amount of stuff we have, we ha that is limiting us, so we can only make four tricycles. And uh, we'll get more into this stuff in the next video, which is all about limiting reactants and uh, percent yield. So this is sort of a limiting reactant question. So, but still, you could figure it out just by thinking about how many parts for each bike and uh, dividing it into these coefficients. So here we have a reaction. So what is conserved in the reaction shown below? So mass, mass and atoms, mass, atoms, moles, and molecules, or mass, atoms, and moles. So let's just find out the atoms, mass, molecules, and moles for this whole reaction. And so we have uh, atoms. We can calculate first. So we have two atoms of hydrogen, so two right here. 2 Cl, so we have 2 and 2, 4. Then we have uh, HCl, so one atom here, one atom here, but multiply by 2, which is 4. So again, 4 atoms on both sides. And this always is equal. Then we have moles. So moles is calculated by the coefficients. So we have 1 here, 1 here, so 2 on this side, 2 here. So we have 2 moles on each side. And then again, uh, molecules are is calculated the same way, so we have one molecule, one molecule on this side here. So two molecules on this side, and again two molecules on that side. Then we have uh, mass, which is calculated by looking at the periodic table in each type of element. And I'm pretty sure now you know how to calculate, so I'm just trusting you. So if you did calculate it, you would get 72.92 grams, and because there's the same number of atoms on each side, it's equal. And this atoms and mass is always equal on both sides or conserved. So if it doesn't have atoms or mass, it's immediately wrong. So A is definitely wrong. But in this case, everything is conserved because on both sides everything is equal. And so the correct answer is in fact C. Mass, atoms, moles, and molecules. And so three, which is the most important information from a chemical equation? A states of matter, B moles of products, C moles ratio of reactants and products, or D masses of reactants and products. And so uh, the most important information, if you caught it on the first slide, was the mole ratios of reactants and products. So the answer is in fact C. And the reason why is because we need moles ratios to change, convert from one substance to another. And we'll be talk. We'll be using a lot of this in the uh, in the rest of the unit. So you'll see what I'm talking about in this next PowerPoint. So here we're gonna actually do some converting. So here, even the first part is all about mole-to-mole -mole ratios. So here we're gonna introduce what mole-to-mole -mole ratios are. And so. In chemical calculations, mole ratios convert from moles of one substance to moles of another. Exactly what I said. So if we want to find moles of this or H2O from moles of this, we just use ratios to convert. And so mole ratios are ratios of the coefficients in a balanced equation. And so here we're going to go through some mole ratios. So for here's an example of ratio. So for every two hydrogen, we have one mole of oxygen. So this is a ratio two to one. 
then we have another ratio for every two moles of hydrogen we have two moles of uh, H2O so water so again this is just coefficients comparing then we can convert we can use oxygen as an example so for every one mole of oxygen there's two moles of H2O or there is tons of others and so in this uh, particular equation we can form six mole to mole ratios and here are all the ratios and these are all calculated just by looking at comparing coefficients and so again we'll just go quickly go over them so two moles of hydrogen we have one mole of oxygen because two to one two moles of hydrogen two moles of water one mole of oxygen two moles of hydrogen and then one mole of oxygen here and then two moles of H2O and then we can uh, go from water to hydrogen so two moles of hydrogen two moles of I mean two moles of water two moles of hydrogen and then two moles of uh, H2O and one mole of oxygen so these all these ratios are just from these coefficients and just switching them up and making different combinations and so in chemistry we we use moles in the equations but in the lab we use grams to measure so we can't convert directly from grams to A to grams to B so we convert grams to moles using uh, molar masses and then we use uh, mole to mole ratios to convert from A to B moles of A to moles of B and then we use uh, molar mass of B to convert from moles of B to grams of B and so that's the whole step that's the whole reason why we have moles and, and grams and molar mass to convert so if you didn't catch that we'll talk more about it later and so here in a typical stoichiometric problem we first convert from grams to moles if necessary and we do this by con using molar mass so if we have grams of A we can divide by molar mass to get moles of A then we have uh, step 2 convert from moles to moles using molar ratio from the coefficients in the reaction equation and so pretty much if you have moles of A we can convert from moles of B by looking at the equation and using all the uh, mo different mole ratios and then we have type uh, step 3 convert from moles to grams again using molar mass from the periodic table and so here is uh, the largest possible problem which is from all these three steps and so here we have grams of A so we first divide by the molar mass which is in grams of A and we get one mole because molar mass is always one mole per x amount of grams and so notice how grams cancels and this is the molar mass right here this first fraction then whatever is uh, remember whatever's on the top goes on the bottom of the next fraction so they cancel out and so here we have one, one mole of A so whatever is on the top goes on the bottom so moles of A is on the bottom and the moles of B is on the top because that's what we need moles cancels out and this is a mole to mole ratio because it compared moles to each other then we have moles of B so moles of B goes on the bottom and this time we need grams so we have moles of B one mole and then X amount of grams and so moles of B cancels out and we're just left with grams and that's the final thing this is a molar mass so molar mass molar ratio molar mass those are the three types of fractions or three different fractions in their orders and so here we're going to uh, there's four types of problems so this is type 1 moles to moles which is pretty simple so how many moles of hydrogen gas are produced from four moles of magnesium so first we have to figure out what we have and what we need we need moles of hydrogen and we have moles of magnesium so we have to first figure out we have moles of magnesium so we write it down so we have to figure out what step we have so we're given moles so so we start with this because it says moles are given so this is the first uh, so this is uh, the only fraction we need this time so 
we have moles and we need to go to moles. So for uh, the second fraction here, the mole ratio is the only thing we need, which is calculated from the coefficients. So here, we just use the coefficient of the equation. So whatever's on the top goes on the bottom. So we have one mole of magnesium that goes on the bottom here. And then we have moles of hydrogen on the top. So that's what we need. So we have one mole of hydrogen on the top. And again, this is the mole ratio, which is uh, calculated from this equation right here. So one mole of magnesium, one mole of hydrogen. And then we we just multiply the, the numerators and divide by all the denominators multiplied together. So four times one divided by one is just four. And so we just get four moles of hydrogen. And so here we have another type one problem. How many moles of hydrogen gas are produced from four moles of HCl? And so this time we were just using uh, HCl instead of magnesium. So again, we figure out what we have and what we need. We have four moles of HCl. We need uh, how many moles of hydrogen gas. So again, we only use the mole-to-mole uh, -mole conversion factor, which is a mole ratio, because we have moles and we want to get to moles. And this is again calculated from the coefficients of the equation. So we put moles of HCl on the bottom so they cancel out. And we put moles of hydrogen on the top because that's what we need. And so here, moles of HCl cancels out. And so if we divide 4 by 2, we just get 2 moles of hydrogen. And then here we have type 2 calculation, so this is slightly different. Now we're going to bump it up a step. So how many grams of H2 are produced from 4 moles of HCl? So this time we need grams and we're given moles of HCl. So we first r figure out what we need and what we have. We need grams of H2. We have moles of HCl. So first we figure out what we need. So we need to convert from moles to grams. So we use step 2 and step 3. And step 2, mol molar ratios are uh, calculated from the coefficients. Molar mass is calculated from the periodic table. And so here we have moles of HCl. So moles of HCl goes on the bottom. And then use the coefficient. So we have 2 moles of HCl for every 1 mole of hydrogen. Like this. Then uh, moles of HCl cancels out. So, and then we have left with moles of H2 so we have the molar mass of H2 but this time we have uh, so we put one mole of uh, H2 so they cancel out and then for molar mass we need hydrogens molar mass times 2 because there's two of them so 1.01 times 2 which is 2.02 and we get this so we just multiply all the numerators multiply all the denominators and so once we multiply the numerators and divide by the multiplication of or the products of the denominator, we get 4.04 grams of hydrogen. And here we have type 3, so we're going to bump it up one level more. So this time it's asking how many moles of H2 we have if we have 48 grams of magnesium. So this time we start with grams and want to go to moles instead of moles to grams. So we have to figure out what we need and what we have. So we have 48 grams and we want to get to moles. So we're going to have to use step 1 and step 2 this time. And step 1, which is molar mass, is calculated from the periodic table. And then step 2 is calculated from the coefficients in the equation. And so here we have 48 grams of magnesium. So whatever's on the top of the fraction goes on the bottom. So grams of magnesium goes on the bottom. And then for in molar mass, there's always one mole with X amount of grams. So in this case, there's one mole with 24.31 grams of magnesium, which is from the periodic table. So grams cancels out. We're left with moles. Check right there. Now we have moles of magnesium. We need to get to moles of hydrogen. So we use molar mass. I mean, mole, mole to mole ratio. Sorry about that. So moles of magnesium goes on the bottom because it's on the top of this fraction. So whatever's on the top goes on the bottom. So we have one mole of magnesium because we have a coefficient of one with one mole of hydrogen. So we have a one to one mole ratio. 
and then we just multiply the top together. So we put parentheses of 48 times 1 times 1 divided by parentheses 24.31 times 1. Or you could just do 48 times divided by 24.31 and get approximately 2 moles of hydrogen. And so this is a fourth type of problem which includes every single fraction possible. So this is the longest type of problem. So how many grams of H2O are produced from 18 grams of HCl? So this time we start with grams and want to end with grams. So we have to do all three fractions. So again, we find out what we need and what we have. We need grams of H2. We have grams of HCl. So we convert from 18 grams of HCl to grams. So first we need uh, to figure out what we need. So this time I told you we need all three fractions. And so again, we get molar mass from the periodic table, mole, ra mole ratio from the coefficients, and moles, another molar mass from the periodic table. And so we just line them all up and multiply. So here we have 18 grams of HCl. And so the molar mass of HCl is calculated with the periodic table. So we have one hydrogen, so 1.01, plus a uh, molar mass of chlorine, which is um, 35.45. So whatever's on the top goes on the bottom, so grams will go on the bottom, and then one mole on the top, it gets molar mass. And so we have one mole for 36.46 grams of HCl, because we got from adding molar mass of hydrogen, 1.01 plus 35.45. And then grams cancels out, we're checked. So then we compare moles of HCl to hydrogen. So we have two moles of HCl goes on the bottom because moles goes on the bottom. And then we have one mole of H2. And so here we have it. So moles cancels out, we're just left with moles of hydrogen. Now we need to convert from moles of H2 to grams. So we have we put one mole on the bottom because if we have one mole on the top we need it to cancel out so we put it on the bottom so because that's molar mass there's always one mole and then with 2.02 grams because hydrogen's atomic mass is 1.01 .01, but there's two hydrogen here so it's 2.02 .02. then we just multiply all the numerators so 18 parentheses 18 times 2.02 .02, parentheses divided by parentheses 36.64 times 2 parentheses so we divide uh, the product of this on the top divide by the product of the bottom and then we get about uh, 4 4.499 grams of H2 which is pretty small and so here's a quick quiz to see what you learned how many moles or of water it are produced from burning four moles of ethanol. So we have uh, this equation here. And so we want to find how many moles of water produce if we have four moles of this ethanol. So is it 3, 4, 12, or 1.33 moles? So let's just set up the fractions. So we have four moles and we need to convert to moles. We just use the mole ratio, one step. So we have moles of ethanol on the top so we need moles of ethanol on the bottom and then moles of water on the top of this fraction so we have one mole of ethanol on the bottom and three moles of uh, um, H2O on the top because it's just from the equation so we have four times three and we get twelve moles of H2O we just multiply the numerators and divide by one which is nothing does nothing so four times three is twelve and then here we have question two, how many grams of oxygen gas are needed to react with two moles of ethanol? So you have uh, the same equation. And is it six grams, 21.1, 96.0 grams, or one, 192 grams? And so we have two moles of ethanol. So again, we need, we need, we have moles and we want to go to grams, so we use two steps so we have to convert from moles of ethanol to moles of oxygen here and then moles of oxygen to grams so we first write down what's given so we use molar molar ratio to convert from moles of ethanol to oxygen so moles of 
ethanol goes on the bottom, so it cancels. So one mole of ethanol for three moles of uh, oxygen. So we get this from the equation. And then moles of oxygen, we multiply by the molar uh, mass. So for every one mole goes on the bottom because moles need to cancel, we have uh, 16 times 2 because there's two oxygens. So each O2 molecule weighs 32 grams approximately. And so if we just multiply the top, and then just divide by 1, which is just does nothing. So multiply 2 times 3, 6, 6 times 32. Um, and so we would get a D, 192 grams. And so just as a tip here, just for a test-taking strategy, if you did not have a calculator or you wanted to do this problem super quickly, you could have just set up this fraction. And so just from... Uh, just from using estimation or approximations, you could figure out that this is a very large number because if you multiply 6 times 30, so just think of 6 times 3 and then add a 0. 6, is, 6 times 3 is 18, plus a 0 is 180. So out of all these answers, these answers are so far apart, the only answer close to 180 is D. So just remember, just use your uh, common sense and approximation skills to figure out answers instead of punching into the calculator. So just as a test strategy, if you need some time or anything. And so that is it for today. So today we talked about uh, stoichiometry and um, how to interpret those equations to find the atoms, molecules, moles, and mass. Then we also talked about um, how to con convert from grams of substance to moles to back to grams and so we use those three fractions molar mass mole to mole ratio which is from the coefficients and molar mass again for the periodic table and remember what's on the numerator of the first fraction goes on the denominator of the next fraction so they cancel out and then also remember uh, mole to mole ratios are very important in stoichiometry in general for it because it helps convert from some, some substance of A or like reactants to products and it tells the chemist exactly how much we need. And then for um, the first part we talked about, just remember atoms and mass is always uh, conserved because it has to follow the law of conservation of mass. And uh, remember that molecules and moles is calculated from the coefficients, just adding them up and usually they're always equal and so that is it for today and so the next video is going to be all about limiting reactants and percent yield and so uh, until next time I hope you have a good day and we'll see you later